enthusiasts invading Nevada. Some county commissioners voting to pre-sign an emergency declaration ahead of a planned raid on Area 51. Fox News' William Longinus is live in Los Angeles with the details. William, if this happens, I just want you to know I'm the one who's going to cover it, not you. I'm going I to know. You got your sleeping bag and you got 30 I'm days. <laughs> okay. I, okay. Well, here's, a, here's what we don't know, is how many people are going to show up other than you. But if you're a public official, you can't do nothing. That is why both counties around Area 51 signed emergency declarations yesterday and Monday, as potentially 5, 10, maybe 50,000 or more show up with the intent of taking over a top-secret Air Force base where the government allegedly hides aliens and UFO secrets. Storm Area 51 started as a Facebook joke, but area residents aren't laughing. They say this is a non-drug, no drugs, no alcohol. Who are you trying to kid? One county approved permits for a three-day concert and expo, but a neighboring county turned down a permit for a similar festival there, fearing it could not handle the crowd. I'm also concerned about, oh, gee, uh, no smoking out here. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for that whole area to go up in flames. The Air Force isn't too happy either, promising to protect their facility from trespassing with roadblocks and personnel. But the area has only one highway, a handful of gas stations, and a few restaurants. Officials fear a traffic, cell phone, sanitation, and public safety nightmare. But the entrepreneurs see a gold mine with thousands of people with nowhere to go, nothing to eat. They argue giving them permits for concert locations at least gives people a place to go when they get turned back at the roadblocks leading to Area 51. I don't think anybody could ever prepare for anything like this. I, you know, um, but we're doing our absolute best. What are you gonna do for them if these people are wandering around all the desert? Taking a crap everywhere, dumping their garbage, setting fires. So those attending plan a pre-dawn raid on the facility September 20th. So bring your sleeping bag and energy bar, uh, Melissa. You may not find a hotel room or aliens, but it may feel like another world. Back to you. Well, good evening, good afternoon. Old Pipe Pals. Holy Pipe Pals. It's Holy Smoke and Pipe Padre coming back at you with hmm, my new my newest acquisition from the Tinderbox in Carson City. Oh, I'm sorry. Reno, Nevada. That was Reno, Nevada. Hmm. Hmm. I'm smoking this. Um, what is this? This is the... Uh, no, the pina colada, I think it is, from the tinderbox. Okay, and we got a little bit of Black Rifle Coffee here. The Black Rifle Coffee Company from Utah. All right, here you go. Mmm, that is a wonderful, great cup of coffee. Okay, so how are y'all doing? Well, holy smoking pie padre here. And so you're probably wondering what in the world is going on with this guy? We're here to talk about Area 51 and aliens and all sorts of cool stuff along with pipes and coffee. And what other libations that you want to drink? Let's see, I think the camera's right there. So I need to be talking right there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> okay. Well, it's good to see you guys again. Welcome to my August, a day in August video. And for some reason, <coughs> I've been really intrigued with uh, this whole idea. Now, I live here in uh, a big thing there's a big quarry over here and it's filled with water and about a hundred thousand years from now they, they actually think it's going to be a really nice beautiful thing you know blue lake you know thing called lake tahoe but right now it's just a big quarry and you know the water's kind of you know filling up maybe 
maybe ooh, maybe in about a hundred years, it'll a hundred thousand years it'll fill up and it might even be lakeshore property up here. Who knows? Okay. Hmm. But I don't think I'm going to be around to see all that. But uh, they speculate, uh, the land developers speculate, about 100,000 years, there's going to be some, a big lake out here, and then there's going to be some really nice lakefront property. Hmm. But anyway, so I digress. <clears throat> but uh, around, uh, around this quarry out here, uh, about 20 miles or so, uh, is the great state of Nevada. And Nevada is the place where Area 51 is. And believe it or not, we might, uh, if this thing, okay, this whole thing, I guess, as you saw in the video, was just kind of a, uh, kind of a whimsical kind of a thing. Started on, what, Facebook. But um, it looks like it's, it, it, might, it might turn into something, uh, which could be either really a kind of a cool thing or kind of a dreadful thing, de 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 kind of an ugly thing. Mm. So anyway, um, I've just been intrigued by it. And also, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know that this is summer and I love summer reruns. I like to sometimes unplug from current events, political events, whatever, and sometimes just go back and say, hey, I want to look, I want to watch an old movie, a great classic old movie. And one of those movies is uh, Forbidden Planet. <clears throat> and I have to say that as I learn more about video editing and kind of playing with Final Cut Pro in my, in my spare time, I'm still moving in all my tawdry stuff. Actually, I've been going through a thing called Swedish Death Cleaning. Das Tugning. Das Tugning. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but... It's combining the Swedish words for cleaning and death into one. Dustogning. So anyway, I um, have been trying to let go of a lot of stuff. And who knows, dear pipe pals, who knows? Maybe old Holy Smoking Pipe Padre might uh, be auctioning off a, a box of his old pipes. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, um, so... Um, but I've been, you know, here in uh, the Tahoe area now for about a month and a half. Again, unpacking. And, um, but again, I, I go, I take a lot of trips to Carson City and Reno, probably like once a week. And, uh, you know, again, <clears throat> I can't help but realize that Area 51 is probably, you know, now it's, it's closer, I think, to um, Las Vegas than it is Reno. But let's just say it's within the possibility if ever one day I want to just get up super early and take a drive as far as I can to Area 51, I guess I could do that. So I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. But maybe, who knows, maybe maybe later in the fall, I don't know. But next month in September, around the 21st, 22nd, they're supposed to have this big ex alien extravaganza where they're going to try to make a rush, supposedly, uh, on Area 51. Uh-oh. They heard me talking about it. They got air surveillance on me right now. I gotta be careful. Okay, let's pretend. We didn't say anything. So, anyway, um, so we're talking about the indigenous uh, varieties of the different uh, pine trees here in the Tahoe Basin. Hope so. Okay, I think they're gone now. Okay. So anyway, that air, air surveillance, you know, it's just a, it was a black jet flying around the rectory. So well, here it comes again. Anyway, so we'll see if this thing really turns into something. Um, I don't think I, on the video I just played you, maybe I did, there was a guy, yeah, I think I just played the one where the guy accidentally drove in 
less than a half a mile or a mile down the road and they nabbed him <laughs> they, they, they were making it they were going to make an example out of him now they didn't light him up they didn't fire him up but if a bunch of people <clears throat> who had hostile intent to actually defy the government you know I don't know especially if there really is something there I mean now I think it'd be kind of cool if, if 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 a bunch of people let's say let's say a thousand crazy people coming from Burning Man it's also in Nevada they got their brains kind of fried at Burning Man they said yeah let's go and let's go infiltrate area 51 dude and uh, wouldn't it be a, a kind of an interesting thing if all of a sudden, say, a thousand people said, let's just, let's get online and let's all go forward and they can't kill us all. You want to bet? <laughs> but it'd be kind of cool if all of a sudden some kind of a weird alien force field sprung up and pushed them back. Like, whoa! Or maybe a freeze raid. <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Like, alien technology? I don't think so. Anyway, I just think it's fascinating. I just think it's fun to talk about. It's all just fun, summer fun stuff to talk about. Along with <clears throat> pipes. Little white legacy dot there. Ta-da! And... Black rifle cop. Ooh, that, that kind of looks kind of cool there. Yeah, maybe I can make that a thumbnail. Thumbnail, huh? Okay. Get some coffee here. Mm. So anyway, I like I like watching old movies, as most of you know. And um, so sometimes as I'm watching these movies, especially the credits or some of the what we consider now, you know, hokey special effects. I go, you know, I could probably do something pretty close to that in Final Cut Pro or Motion, Motion 5. So I said, you know, I like the credits in in uh, Forbidden Planet. And I said, I bet you I could try to find a way to recreate that, you know, to a certain extent on in my software, my video editing software. So I decided, why not have fun and see if I could do that? So I think I, I gave it the old college try. I think I had a little bit of fun, uh, kind of mocking or, you know, doing a little uh, homage to uh, Forbidden Planet, Forbidden Pipes, <laughs> Forbidden Pipes, starring Holy Smoking Pie Padre and Little Alien. Yeah, Little Alien. Uh, not to be confused with Little Elsie, and I have some very sad news. Um, my little kitty cat about two weeks ago, now going on almost three weeks, uh, up until the first month, she was doing fine. She was loving it up here and just, you know, having a blast. And then about three weeks ago, she basically disappeared, literally. And I don't know what happened. Some people speculate that maybe she got, she met up with a coyote, which I hope not. I tend to think that maybe, because we have lots of visitors up here, that maybe somebody saw her because she was going up here. I'll just tilt the camera. She was going up there into the woods further and further and further and further and further <clears throat> and I kind of think that she didn't know her what her boundaries were you know at the other rectory she had clear boundaries she had buildings and fences and all sorts of things and you know she had her little her little world like all cats do and so she had clear I can't go any further this is it and then she just you know come home run around and she was just, you know, 
she knew that this was her territory and she was happy about that. But here, I noticed that every day she would stay out longer and later and later. And there really are no boundaries up there. There are houses, kind of, you know, nestled in the trees in the forest. But there's no fences or walls or other buildings that bring her to a complete stop. Like, okay, I can't go any further, you know. We had um, the hall in the background at the other church. And beyond that was a big fence. There was a fence on the side. Now, I know cats can jump over fences, but primarily they, they kind of come to a point where this is my boundary. This is, okay, this is my territory. I'm the only cat here. Okay. And I say, so, you know, they, 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 but, but here, I think it was just, it was sort of like, I have to say in some ways, it's kind of like drugs for a cat because it's just also wild. And there were no boundaries. And I think she just would go deeper and deeper and higher up in the woods. And I don't know if she got lost. I don't know if somebody saw her and said, oh, what's this cat doing up here? And they probably thought, well, you know, hey, if nobody wants this cat, we'll take it. So I just hope that, uh, and I did look around just to see if maybe there was a little cat carcass somewhere. Sad to say that, but I had to face that reality. So I walked her all around here and I didn't see any, no evidence of any kind of foul play. No, not foul play, but, you know, feline play, I guess. But anyway, so <clears throat> I'm very sad. Uh, and, but I kept hoping that maybe she'd just come back. Because I've had cats before, and I've had a couple of them where they actually disappear for like two or three weeks, and then all of a sudden they show back up again. Where they go, what happened, with, I don't know. So I've been kind of holding out hope, but I think after three weeks, it's, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that she's not coming back. And I had her three years, just about three years to the day. She, I think, disappeared August 1st. I got her on August 10th, three years ago. There's a little kitten. And she was a little delight and a joy in my life. And uh, as sad as I am, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes you you, you feel like, well, that's the, that's the end of that. I'm not going to have any more pets. That's it. And I don't know. This time, I almost feel like, okay, you know, as much as I love my little kitty, you know what? I'm hoping that she found another home and somebody who was a visitor saw her wandering around and scooped her up and took her, took her home. And she's having a nice life somewhere else. And I'm hoping that's the reality. Um, you know, some people say, well, the coyotes probably got her. And I thought, well, my best buddy, who you've seen on this channel a couple times, Mm, he's good stuff. He lives in Grass Valley and they have coyotes there too. And he has outdoor cats. They're not outdoor indoor. They're outdoor period. And he's had them for like seven years. And he said with forts like this, a cat can climb up a tree. I mean, my cat was going up all these crazy trees. It's like, you know, she just loved the trees. She's always been a tree climber. And she's always been a very cautious cat. So I want to believe that her little natural instincts would probably have, would have told her, I need to get up a tree because there's a coyote coming. The only other thing is that she did kind of one day, it made me really nervous, was I saw her on the other side of the house here. And then right... If you can probably even hear, there's a road there. Now, again, I didn't see any little cat carcasses on the side of the road, but the day before she uh, disappeared, a little dog got hit by a car here. I mean, it was really sad. Really sad. So, but I am thinking, believe it or not, and, and this kind of surprises me because normally I would say, oh, I'm never going to get another pet again. I said, you know what? Why don't you just go out and get another little kitten? Kittens are cute. Kittens are funny. They're just, they're, you know, just 
you know, I mean, they need a home too. So once I get unpacked and I kind of get a little more settled, I probably will in the fall, probably go ahead and get another little cat, you know, and little kitten and just kind of say, well, well, try it again. But I really, I just, you know, I, I mean, I love that cat. <laughs> she was a good little companion and, um, you know, I mean, it's just, that's the way it was, you know, and just like, you know, I'd come home at the end of the day and there's my goofy cat and, and sometimes she'd do goofy little cat things that were just so endearing, you know, and anyway, so I don't know. So those of you who are Elsie, Elsie fans, just say a little prayer for Elsie. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. I gotta tell you, this is really good. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I hope you're all doing well and you're having a great uh, summer. What's left of it? It's late summer now. Mm. Um, let's see, not this weekend, but well, wait a minute. Gosh, she, well, I think that's right. We got this weekend will be the 20, 25th, I think. Tomorrow will be the 23rd, 25th. Yeah, Sunday will be the 25th. And Labor Day will be uh, next weekend. You know, so, you know, Labor Day kind of brings to a close the official summer season. And we get ready for winter because winter is coming well, thank you all for watching and um take care of yourself i'll say guten abend to all of you and uh have a pleasant evening and we'll see you in the next holy smoke and pipe padre video so take care thanks for watching we'll see you soon bye-bye